Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Pagan. Uh, we are starting our first day of our first unit. So in today's lesson, we're going to be solving problems with inverse, direct, and joint variations. Um, so please go ahead and write that on your paper and let's get started. Now, a direct relationship is... Ooh, I misspelled that, huh? A direct relationship is when something is increasing, so is the other behavior. For example, the more I eat, the more weight I'm going to gain. So that is a direct relationship. My behavior is resulting in more weight. The way we represent that is y equals kx. Now, the same thing could also be happening. So the less I eat, um, the less I weigh. And that is also a direct relationship as my behavior is decreasing, therefore something else is decreasing with it. An inverse relationship is as your behavior is increasing, something else is decreasing. So it is represented by y equals k divided by x, where k is a constant number. Okay, um, But the same behavior, or as a behavior is decreasing, something could be increasing. Okay, So that is an inverse relationship. Now, the last kind of relationship we have is a joint relationship, and that is similar to direct. Now we have more than one variable. So as one thing is increasing, two other behaviors might also be increasing with it. Or as one thing is decreasing, the other two behaviors are decreasing with it. So we represent that by y equals k x times z, where x and z represent the other two factors that are either increasing or decreasing with our y value. All right, so in example number one, and you'll get to do this on your homework as well, is we want to look at data and we want to say, hey, this is a direct inverse or a neither relationship. So the first thing I like to do is figure out what kind of a, a relationship this is. So I like to solve for y equals, so I'm going to just divide by x on both sides, and we end up getting y equals 4.8 over x. Well, since this is the same thing as an inverse, which you can see right there where k happens to be 4.8, we can just say that the relationship here is inverse. As one thing is going up, it seems like the x value will have to go down, or vice versa. Looking at the second one, we have y equals x plus 4. Well, that's not a direct relationship because all it's saying is as one thing is going up, the other thing is being added to 4, not being multiplied by 4. So therefore, this is neither. Let's look at b. Uh, we have x equals y over x minus or 1.5. So what I do, once again, is get y by itself. And I notice right away that y equals, because these are by itself, 1.5 times x. So this is a direct relationship because our k is being multiplied by x. Now you could have also kind of seen that in b without doing anything else. And I'm going to show you really quick. I'm going to erase this, so don't get scared. I'm going to just show you on the other side. This is a, also a direct relationship because look at it. We have 1 over 1.5 as a number, and y is right next to it on top. Well, since y is being multiplied by a k value, a constant, we know that it's also a direct relationship. So without solving for y, you can see that relationship. I'm going to go ahead and on the second one, divide by x again, and we have y equals 2 divided by x. So once again, the constant is on top, and it's divided by the x value, so this is an inverse relationship. All right, let's look at table of values. Now, with table of values, we have uh, 1.5, 20, 2.5, 12. What I like to make sure is that these values are in order. And what I'm noticing in the x is 1.5, 2.5, 4, and 5. All these values are going up. And in the other one, we have 20, 12, 7.5, 6. Well, these are going down. So right away, I'm thinking this could be an inverse relationship. As one thing is going up, the other one is going down. So up. All right, now I want to make sure that my k, the constant, is the same. So I'm going to just pick two values. So I'm going to actually pick these right here. And we have y equals kx. I'm assuming that it's an inverse relationship because one is going up, one is going down. So I'm using the inverse equation. 
which we listed on top right there. All right, so let's go back. We have 20 equals k over 1.5. So when you multiply 1.5 on both sides, those are gone. k equals, um, we have 30. So I just want to make sure that that matches, that that is okay. So what we want to do is test one more point to make sure that it does work. So I'm going to just use 5 and 6. So we have y equals 30 over x seems to be our equation. So if x is 5, which I'm going to replace that 5 with a x with a 5, so here's where I'm getting it from, then y does equal 6, and that checks. So our equation is inversely. So I'm going to write inverse. Let's find the answer. All right, try f on your own, and we'll go over that in class together. All right, let's pause me if you need to. Please do it. We're going to be checking it. All right, let's go down to example number two. It says the variables x and y vary inversely. And y equals 6 and x equals 1.5. Write an equation that relates x and y. So I'm going to go ahead and say y equals k over x. The, this is an inverse relationship. Now you can also write x equals k over y. It's actually going to result in the same thing. Uh, but I want to stick with this one. So we have, we're trying to figure out what our relationship is. So we know that y equals 6 and x equals 15. Or I'm sorry, not, not 15, 1.5. So we have 6 equals k over 1.5. So if I just multiply 1.5 on both sides, these end up canceling out, and we have k is equal to 9. That is our constant. Therefore, when I take this k value and put it back into the equation, we get y equals, oh, I just jumped, hold on, y equals 9 over x. And that is our inverse equation. Notice that the equation, similar to our models that we've done in the past, have two variables, in this case, y and the x. Then in part two, it says, find y when x equals 4 thirds. Well, now that we have an inverse equation, which happens to be y equals 9 over x, that's pretty simple to solve because they're telling us that x is 4 thirds, which I'm going to put in parentheses. And when I use that, my calculator to get that, we end up getting 27 over 4. So y equals 27 over 4. All right, let's keep going. Now, here in example three, it says write an equation, and it's giving you a different option. So for first one, it says y varies directly. So as soon as I think of directly, I'm thinking that the k value is going to be multiplied. So here's what we're with x, and inversely, because I'm thinking k value is going to be divided by z squared. So here's what that looks like. y equals k times x because we're doing directly. So this is more multiply. And inversely is a division. So we have divided by z squared. Notice, however, though, that the equation has one k value. So keep that in mind. We're going to have one k value. All right, let's look at the next one. It says y varies. So once again, y equals inversely. So I'm thinking divided we're going to divide by k. So we have k divided by x to the third. So directly is once again multiplica multiplication and inversely is a division relationship. All right, once right, let's try this one. y equals, ooh, directly. So we're talking about k times x squared, but inversely with z. So divided by z. Once again, pay attention to the minor detail of 1k in each of these equations. I'm going to erase that because I can't see d. Here's d. We have z varies, so z equals jointly. This is very similar to directly, and since it is, it's multiply. 
So we have a k, a constant value, and it's going to be multiplied by, I'm sorry, x squared and the y. So both of them are a jointly relationship. That means that they're being multiplied. All right, let's look at the last one. We have y varies inversely with x and z, so that's going to be k divided by x and z in the bottom. So it's inversely with both of them. Both of them should be dividing by the k value. That's our final answer. All right, let's do some application problems. It says a paycheck varies directly. So we're going to go ahead and highlight directly with the number of hours worked. Suppose the pay for 20 hours of work is $238.25. What is the pay for 500 hours of work? So we have a paycheck, which I'm going to represent that as P, equals, so varies, uh, directly. So I know it's a K times with the number of hours worked. And we're gonna, I'm going to represent the number of hours worked by H. So P is going to equal dollars on paycheck and H is going to equal number of hours worked. All right. So, so far they're giving us um, a pair of information. So 20 hours, in 20 hours we made that much. All right, well, we know that this right here is our amount that we made, 238.25 equals K is our constant, and we work 20 hours. So we're trying to figure out what's, what is our rate, how much are we getting paid an hour. When you divide by 20 on both sides, I ended up getting 11.9125, but I'm going to do 91 um, because this is dollars per hour. Okay, that's how much I'm making an hour. All right, so this is our constant. So our equation ends up being P equals 11.91 dollars per hour times hours. Okay, the question then becomes, what is the pay for 500 hours of work? So how much are you going to make? Well, we have 1191 an hour, and if we work 500 hours, which is, whoa, a lot of hours there, uh, we are going to have approximately, when you multiply those, you get 5,956.25 cents, which, uh, you know, that's without taxes, everybody. All right, what I'd like for you to do now is try example number five, um, see how it goes, and we are going to go over that in class together. All right. Have a good um, rest of the problems. <laughs> Make sure you do example number five as well as the one that I assigned you in example number 1F. And we'll see you in class. Have a good day.